doing a quick search on YouTube right now. At this point, there are probably like 1.6 billion videos out there about this latest thing, the OnePlus 11. So what's so special about another video by yours truly anyway? Well, for one, it's a prime example of what not to do during amateur hour. And secondly, if you've just gotten yourself a brand spanking new one of these or are considering one right this moment and just want to get the best out of your phone, I found five Oxygen OS features that you should definitely check out. There's a lot to like granted about the latest Android 13 based Oxygen OS as a whole. There are a lot of pros and cons. I'll make another video about that. But the following that we're going to talk about are the best features of the bunch that I found and I've toggled on and kept on since then. So if you're interested to find out what they are, let's do it after these messages that way. I'm not 100% sure if this is a feature or a flaw of Oxygen OS 13, but I just found out that the screen recorder doesn't work with the screen off or AOD on. There's no like toggle to force it to run in the background if you wanted to, unlike some others. So <laughs> we're just gonna have to get all this for the time being until we move on to the next segment that doesn't require this. But anyways, the capacitive fingerprint reader on this thing is bloody fast. As you can see, it's awesome, right? Plus, to top that off, OnePlus adds something called Quick Launch. It's really awesome and basically allows you to quickly launch apps and supported actions directly from the fingerprint scanning step. So check this out. I swipe down or hold there and then swipe up and I have, in this case, five different options. Say if I'm at a medical office and I need to quickly set an appointment, I have a quick launch here to create a new event and I can use this really quickly like this uh, directly from my lock screen. So to turn this on, you go to settings and you make sure you have this toggled on under special features. You go to quick launch, toggle it on. And here you can basically edit up to five or have up to five different shortcuts that you can create uh, with actions and apps. And I noticed that the actions are pulled from widgets. So anytime, if you're used to widget shortcuts, they're all here. And some are also pre-built from the system itself. In this case, I can call my wife, launch portrait mode from the camera, or even do a quick note or something, or launch Google Assistant directly from my lock screen. It's pretty darn awesome. One thing I definitely miss from using One UI devices is the Edge panel. For those of you in the know, you know what I'm talking about. It's awesome, isn't it? It's just one of those unsung heroes on these devices. And it's something, thankfully, that Oxygen OS also has. It's called Smart Sidebar. Granted, it's not as customizable or as properly executed, in my opinion, as Edge Panel, but it's infinitely better than having to install yet another app that's a battery sapper for the same functionality on stock Android. And here's how to activate it. It's in the same place in settings under special features. Look for Smart Sidebar. You tap that. Make sure it's toggled on. Now the sidebar, this is what's great about it, it's accessible from any screen. You see it on the top left here in this case. You swipe out to open it and here, you can swap out your more frequently used apps or actions for anything you like. And for me, I like to have the calculator or the calendar or navigation apps ready to go pretty much from any screen. But that being said, I'd like to see a couple of improvements here. So OnePlus, listen up. Um, give us customizable height placement for the panel itself. Right now, while you have the option of placing the panel, the bar, either on the left or the right edge, it's locked near the top quadrant like so. And yeah, it's not so great for most of us with average size hands. If you want to have a one-handed use, you have to do a far reach. So yeah. Another thing that one UI's version gets right is assignable split display shortcut. So I can like save a Waze and Google Maps split screen quick icon. So that would be nice to see it OnePlus. So get it done. All right, let's talk about the next feature called flexible windows. It looks really basic on the surface and in most instances as a supposed multitasking tool, it's really kind of weak sauce because you're limited to just having one additional app as a flexible window besides from the main tasks running in the background. However, I found that its main strength lies with things like quickly snapping between responding to texts on a messaging app or running numbers on a calculator. Let me show you this. Like I'm gonna shrink this calculator down to a flexible window and then I'm gonna surf for some apps. And I can copy paste elements too, like say from one text to an email or something like that. And then I can hide the app. If I just run it to the edge right there, it becomes a little icon and just ready to go when I tap it again. And by the way, flexible windows is a permanently on feature. So there's nothing to toggle in the settings whatsoever. And here's another cool thing. You can launch this from the smart sidebar as well. So for supported apps, like in this case, Waze, I can launch it and just 
tap it aside right here, it takes over the calculator as a flexible window. That's pretty cool. Want some added fizz to your always on display? Well, customizable AOD might be the place you want to hit up, guys. This is what mine looks like right now. I have some Bitmoji stickers going. It just it will run different stickers at any given time. The Spotify player along with some uh, notifications. Oh, one cool thing. Let me show you this. The Spotify player, if I can get it to run. Look at this. It's not your generic player either. It will show you recommended playlists right here where you can launch right away. I think that's dope and I hope more music services can add support for this. Anyway, you can access customizable AOD via settings. You tap the gear icon once again, look for wallpapers and style and over on the right here, always on display. And there's just more customizations here that you can shake a stick at. Just requires a lot of experimentation, but starting from the top under contextual info, you can turn on the music playback and under supported apps, you can turn on the special Spotify player right there. Now back to the main screen here. Below, these are shortcuts to four of your most recent AOD mods. While below that is really where all the fun begins. And there's quite a lot of different preset themes that comes with the app, either graphics or textual uh, elements like time and date and such like that. If you have Bitmoji itself paired up, you make sure you have the app installed. You can sync up all your latest stickers. And there's also Canvas uh, where you can use a portrait photo to generate like an outline art. Uh, it's much better than I thought with the only downside that uh, any so-called reason Canvas Arts isn't saved. Like even right here under the quick thing, I can launch that, but it will try to create a new one each time, which can be a hassle. Um, custom patterns are also here similar to, right here is like similar to animated fractals. Less impressive for me is text and text images. Yeah, it's more, as long as the text editor isn't powerful, I'm not gonna use it as much. Bowmoji right here is OnePlus's take on Apple's Memoji. So uh, if you're able to take the time to create your own animated avatar, the results can be pretty good actually. Oh, and since you're here, let's not forget, let me go back again. Let's play around right down here with fingerprint animation. There are seven fingerprint uh, graphics that you can choose from. Uh, two of my favorites are Ripple, uh, for that kind of supernova effect and fireworks, which kind of reminds me of, you know, gives me like Harry Potter or Doctor Strange vibes. Now, edge lighting is really cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, the phone will softly light up the edges of the display right around the corners here with, when each notification is received. And it works really great if you're in silent mode. Now, this feature also serves the OnePlus 11's display especially well because with its uh, waterfall screen, you know, the curved size right here, when you have this laying down flat on the table, you can see it glow around the sides. Pretty darn awesome too. Well, thank you so much for watching yet another video of the OnePlus 11, and I hope you enjoyed this little collection of tips. I have more videos coming down the pipeline, including the camera and the OS in general, performance testing with gaming and all that. I can't wait to test it with this little controller and just running, pushing this to the max. It'll be fun to do. So uh, make sure you tune in, subscribe, turn on notifications to get dropped or get notified when these videos drop. And again, thank you for your time for watching this. You could have been doing something else altogether, but the fact that you're here really means a lot to me. And in the meantime, remember to show your support, subscribe, like this video and everything like that. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, because guess what? If you haven't seen the news, the world needs it more than ever. And it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out.